Charlie, no be joke. Oh. No be pressure, joke. people like Johnny can give you. No, no. You no get gray hair, you go get gray I'm, hair. I'm innocent. And <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That the pressure Johnny and his people, <laughs> mm -hmm. the pressure they can give you, you no get gray hair, you go get. So your best bet is not mm. to have hair. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy word and thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Juma Mubarak to all our Muslim brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. This morning I came to serve reminders because I think that as a country we tend to forget too quickly. So I came to serve reminders. Yesterday we spoke about the 56th anniversary since Ghana's dark days, if you like the darkest days when Dr. Kwame Nkrumah was overthrown. You know it took about, um, what do you call it, three years before we got a new government in 1969 when Prime Minister Buzia had come to be at the helm of affairs. The NLC had uh, gone by their word and allowed that the constitution, you know, a new constitution be re restored. That's why we got the Second Republic. So a bit of history there for you. Now, when that victory was won for Ghana and by Ghana, there were concerns that were raised by the people of Ghana, the ordinary people of Ghana. Concerns about what was pertaining. And these were the... Uh, if you like the the rude military era, the first part, there were concerns. This morning I came to serve notice, but first before I share the notices from the Drum Magazine of 1969 and 1970 with you, and we dug into the archives, I will share with you what the the cocoa sellers now say. I mean, there's the artwork of the cocoa sellers, a reminder that we are a net exporter of food. That's what our president told us. Our Greek minister reiterated that. And in fact, at some point, we had to even ban the exportation of cereals, maize, sogum, soya, all those things. I think the ban is still in force. Now, for those of you who live in any part of this country, koko and kosi, kinki and fish, yokegari or gobewachi and all those things is the, is the mainstay for us. So this morning, you find people going to buy cocoa. These days, when you buy the cocoa, there is half a half cocoa in the rubber. Have you noticed it? And it begs the question, and this is a reminder to their great minister. The first question is this. We are planting for food and jobs. We are told that we are harvesting more, and we're told that we are a net exporter of food. But in that same vein, we have been told that there's a ban on the exportation of such, such food that is supposed to be in abundance. One of the things that we use for the cocoa that we drink is either the maize or the millet. This is what the cocoa seller had to write. He said, dear customers, eh, notice, dear customers, please no more cocoa with sugar, one CD. Starting from one CD, 50 pesos. And above, effective 19 February 2022, the cocoa sellers have served notice. What it means is that your life is 50% harder, or 50 pesos harder, if you like, however I like to call it, because 100% 100% is one CD. So one CD, 50 pesos, is 50% harder of your life. If you are like some of the people I know in this house, cocoa one CD means nothing to you. So now that the one CD guys will now take one CD 50 pesos, you'll be taking three CDs cocoa. Minus the kosi, minus the bow fruit, minus the bread. So that's the first notice. Then let's now go to the 1969 document, the drum magazine. And this is, so the drum went out. On that occasion, like we'll do in a Vox Pop for television. They went out to drum picture probe. What do we ask of our new government? This was the government of President Buzia. The MPP government in power now comes from that same stock. This was President Buzia's PPP. The MPP in power now comes from that same stock. It says, what do we ask of our new government? 
Now, this is Madam Yamansa. She was a chop bar proprietress. Food, 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 please. The prices of food stuff on the market are so dear that chop bars, owner, chop bar owners, are forced either to increase the price per plate or to reduce the quantity of food per plate. Not that we are cutthroats. The government has to provide more incentives so as to encourage the farmers to produce more. That alone will not bring down the prices. More feeder roads have to be constructed and the existing ones repaired so that the harvest from the farms can reach the market. Problem in 1969 still pertains today. From the farms to the market, that connection, we have brought cocoa roads we have brought all manner of roads. We have instituted the year of roads, the second year of roads. We are in another year of roads. We have spoken about Sino Hydro deal. This was a problem in 1969. If the bragging right and the scorecard is that we have constructed more roads, we should see a connection between that and the prices of food on the market. Is that it? I don't know. But this is the Chobba Madam speaking. Now, this is Miss C. Atiase. She's unemployed. So, possibly like a NAPCO person or somebody who has, that has been done with their teacher training, whatever it is, they are unemployed. This one says, one of the needs of man is clothing. But right now in Ghana, clothes are too dear that very few people can afford them. This explains why the Obroni World secondhand clothes are becoming very popular. Not only that, if even you have the money to buy the clothes, you find that you either get it, uh, it's, what you get is of, of inferior quality, that is if you get them. I appreciate the task ahead of this government, but it shouldn't forget that people in this country have a right to be clothed and decently too. This was what she said then. Now, Guy Niwon, that's his name, he says, I quite appreciate the enormous tax facing this government. But certain issues must be given priority attention. Unemployment is certainly a big headache everywhere, but ours is slipping out of hand. Our situation since 1969. I just want to remind you that government after government, I'm not saying that the, this government can solve all the problems, but I'm suggesting to you that if our priorities are right, if our priorities are right, we will get certain things done and done well. Now, it says it's slipping out of hand. I believe that if foreign investment is encouraged, not the 10,000 CDs type, fresh job openings will help solve this problem. Quite apart from that, business in the country will progress and money will circulate. Our communication system has also got to be improved. We are still talking about mobile, telephony, and data. Back then, it was even, uh, you know, the landlines. Today, we are still talking about mobile telephony and how poor the services are and how too much expensive data has become. This was in 1969. Now, it says that at the moment, the majority of our roads are bad. And this has contributed in no small measure to the high cost of food stuff in our market. Because the road is bad, the farmer is unable to cut his whole harvest from the farm to the market. As a result, he prizes the little that he can send to the market dearly, while the rest remains to rot on the farm. Still a reality. Still a big reality. Again, he says, the poor nature of the roads has an adverse effect on our foreign exchange. Bad roads can't support cars for long. The cars break down easily. And new spare parts have to be ordered. Housing also cry, uh, cries for immediate attention. Rent allowance. Affordable housing. Same Yada, 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 yada. So I came to serve notice this morning. Now, it says the housing corporation is doing something, but there still remains a lot to be done. If a worker has no place to lay his head, how can he give his best in the factory or office? This reduces productivity. Fact. 1969. It is still pertaining today. Now, aside this, this is J.C. Williams. He said, Taylor, maybe we'll end with this one. On, on what the expectation of the people of Ghana was back then in 1969 when Dr. Buzia came on after three years of military rule that had taken, that had ousted the government of Dr. Nkrumah and what the expectations were then 
And while the situations that they spoke about them still persist now, government after government, there's been some slight improvement. But this was the, these were the sentiments of the people then, and they are still now. It says, I want to see emphasis on three prerequisites of life. Food, shelter, and clothing. At the moment, locally grown food staff cost more than can be thought of. I'm very pleased that the authorities seem to have found out why. It is the poor condition of our feeder roads. That being so, it is the task of this government to maintain the existing feeder roads and construct more to the farming areas. The cost of putting up a building in the country today is suicidal. But why should it be so when we have two cement factories and the timber? No, the government must definitely do something to reduce the cost of building materials. Why on earth should clothing cost all that much when there are textile mills and factories right under our noses? Some of their products don't measure up to the quality of imported ones. Act on this now. 1969. So you can clearly see if you measure our progress with Malaysia, for example, that had won independence with us at the same time, that you see much but yake tripa. You see much but yake tripa. And that's why I keep asking for the scorecard. Now, one of the areas that I would ask for a scorecard is the GRE. The Ghana Revenue Authority. Then he played that short video of uh, Reverend Abishadai for me. He had made a promise to the NAPCO beneficiaries of the GRE that they were going to get 300 CDs more aside the 699 Point fifteen or seventeen that the NAPCO uh, uh, secretary was paying them. I am learning with shock, or I learned with shock yesterday, that the so-called two months that had been paid to all NAPCO beneficiaries perhaps did not include the Hill Ghana and the Revenue Ghana guys. So they are still owed. How they survive food, clothes, shelter, transportation, everything else, I don't know. Play Reverend's video for me. As, just as we did last year, whatever time that we conclude these negotiations, we will bagate it from the 1st of January 2021, and whatever arrears that is due to anybody will be uh, properly um, paid. We also want to mention that, again, we are looking at the NAPCOs as well, also on this level, and we have um, worked out something, and in fact, from the second half of this year going we will be paying the NAPCOs um, 300 cities above what they get from their um, uh, NAPCO allowances. So the GRA will add. Uh, I'm not saying what you are getting, so that nobody will know your salaries. <laughs> but I'm just saying that we are adding 300 more, which will start from a month. Thank you. This was supposed to be, I mean, started at uh, July last year. July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. Okay, February. Eight months. Scan over here. That's what they're asking. And Reverend, Papa Sofu, you promised them. Papa Sofu, you promised them. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 5. It is better not to promise than to promise and not deliver. It is better not to promise than to promise and not deliver. Danny, the last video is the Speaker of Parliament's video. He said that the way things are going in Parliament, if we don't work together, perhaps support the E-Levy, we may not be able to pay salaries. My simple question as you watch this video of the Speaker of Ghana's Parliament is to ask the leaders of this country who are asking all of us to sacrifice, who are asking all of us to pay more, to do more for us, how they are sacrificing as well. You know the issues. 120,000 here, private jet there, this one there, as Gracia there, this one there. Have you put yourself in the shoes of the NAPCO beneficiaries? Have you put yourself in the shoes of the National Service personnel who, in spite of everything that's going up, have had to contend and maintain their lives with 599 cities? Have you asked those questions? It's a simple question. And that's what I want to leave you with. If our leaders who have gone beyond their retirement ages and still have jobs and are being paid are asking the young people who are jobless, worried, frustrated, and are on the verge of losing their identity and confidence and sense of patriotism, are being asked to sacrifice while the old are feeding fat. 
That is not what we envisaged when we fought for independence in 1957. And the situation must change. Speaker of Parliament's video. Good morning. The information at my disposal is not to discourage the committee from doing their work. If something is not done within the next three months, government may not even be able to pay salaries. So we have to take leadership. We have to do a lot of things. With this, the House is accordingly agent in Welcome back. This is still TV3 New Day's time now for the big issue. And in fact, a uh, major global concern has been raging on since yesterday. In fact, something that has been of major concern for everyone for the longest time, at least since 2014. Now, yesterday, Russia launched um, an attack on Ukraine, its neighbor. And it has to do with a number of things. I mean, if you go into the history, you realize that, um, you know, uh, Ukraine had signed on to an agreement, a trade agreement with NATO. NATO and with EU and Russia has not been in favor of it of course if you check the history of the Soviet Union and the fact that Russia believes that if the Western world and Europe get closer and form allies with Ukraine then that means that it will cause a security threat to the Russian nation and Vladimir Putin who is the president of that nation has always expressed concern about that but the worrying thing is that over time when he was asked if he was planning an invasion he said no when his ambassadors were asked they constantly said no and yesterday there was an attack and this is having rippling effects on not just the citizens within Ukraine but even other countries and in fact Africa because Brent crude oil prices have gone up by $105 per barrel and this is the highest since uh, 2014 so since seven years now and that is also something that a lot are worried about because fuel prices could increase already we're even uh, reeling under the effect of high prices in the country so what does it really mean especially for Africa we'll look at the impact on security uh, as we move along because we know Russia also has time with some African countries and recently even with Nigeria they signed some agreement so should we be worried about that what about the students the Ghanaian students who live in Russia how are we going to evict them from the country to safety joining me this morning and we'll have three guests I'm sure before the end of the show but this morning I have Michael Quijo in Kitia he's an international relations analyst and he's here to tell us all about it and maybe what we should be looking out for good morning I hope you're doing well. I'm doing well. Okay. First of all, I want us to just go a bit into the history uh, because a lot of people have been asking, why should we even be concerned about what's happening between Russia and Ukraine? But also it's of major concern because of the effects that it will have on us. Let's go back to the history of how all this came about and why Russia is invading Ukraine. Well, historically, after the end of the World War II, America and NATO, or its Western allies, and the Soviet Union, which was led by Russia, became the two major dominant powers that determined how the world should be ruled and governed based on their victory in the Second World War against Nazi Germany. Now, after the war, the Soviet Union had a coalition of about 16 states yeah. that constituted the Soviet Union. And Russia led these states till the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. Vladimir Putin is a very, very tactful man. Mm. He believes that the post uh, Cold War security architecture of yeah. the world did not favor the Russians. Mm. And he has this empire building ambitions to restore Russia to his decades old glory, which was taken away from it by the United States. Yeah. But the bigger point that Russia and Putin is missing is that this is the 21st century. Countries are independent sovereign states and you don't impose your will on country by mere might of your military strength or your economic might. Mm. And perceiving that line of trajectory is very dangerous for global peace and security. Why? America 
in its own can stand up to Russia on any day militarily. Economically, they are far superior.